what is going on you guys it's your boy moist hypocritical here and uh we're back episode five of my ramble series or whatever the hell you want to call it um i just ate a big meal so my uh my body is quite busy digesting all those uh those macro and micronutrients um so if i sound a little lethargic or lack the emotion that you were looking for in these videos i'm not sure why you were looking for them but if i do then uh that's my excuse i ate a big meal um yeah yeah so it's uh been a couple days since i did one of these uh didn't really have a ton to say it's not like i'm and boiling over i just uh you know i caught myself again kind of uh wasting time away watching a bunch of idiots make a bunch of shitty content so uh it's my turn to make some shitty content and that is exactly what it is um this is a there's an obvious answer to this so it's not like i'm spilling some unspoken beans here by realizing this um but what why aren't there more opinions like just on any topic there i feel like there's such a finite number of opinions on any given thing i mean theoretically with the amount of people on the earth there should be uh I'll, i was gonna say where did that where my beacon go um, there should be a lot more opinions just on everything. I'm not even talking about anything in particular, but it seems that people are, uh, again, I don't mean to be talking down to anyone in that sense, but, uh, it seems that it's so easy just to, you know, listen to somebody who you think is smarter than you or watch some YouTube video. And I'm guilty of this myself too. It's not like I'm on some moral high ground, but. You, know, you watch one stupid YouTube video and then you're like, man, I agree with everything that person said. And now, like, you didn't even give yourself a chance to really make any other opinion, right? And even if, let's say, you watch a second YouTube video that in some part disagrees with the first one, it's you've established a precedent that you trust, you know the dude with the british accent or something which is the whole thing in itself for some reason i i swear every video documenter or video documentary creator or whatever whatever the word is that you want to use um they always have a australian or english accent or something and for some reason you just naturally trust them more as if they're smarter uh there's probably some psychology there there, there's got to be, I would imagine. Um, but yeah, I like, you know, you watch some dude make some, you know, nice cleanly edited video on some topic. And now everyone that watches that video has either watched a video before and completely disagree, disagrees with it or is in wholehearted agreement with this person's message. And it just creates this nice, nice binary, this nice, uh, forgot the word for it a uh, bimodal distribution that's what it is um where instead of having a uh unimodal distribution or just a regular bell curve uh, again, i'm speaking st mathematical here so if i'm speaking chinese to you it basically imagine th like a bell curve i feel like everyone should know what a bell curve is if you don't look it up i'm not going to explain it in detail but Bimodal, bimodal distribution is just essentially two bell, cur bell curves right next to each other that show that whatever data it is, in this case I'm talking about the opinions of people, instead of being distributed over a mostly agreeable truths with some, with, you know, the 1% being idiots that believe, you know, again, I'm just using idiots loosely, uh, that believe some very, something very far from the mean, but now we have this um it's uh, most things to have an opinion on again i'm not talking about anything in particular it's not like i'm singling out some view um but generally speaking it's not it's not a 
unimodal distribution. It's no longer this nice, like most people are around the average. Most people are, are around one of the two averages, which then puts you at odds with the people on the other bell curve, right? And then, you know, that just kind of uh, leads to a, a bunch of people arguing about God knows what instead of, um, I don't know, people having some nice friendly discourse. Because I think it's at the top of one hill, it's harder to sympathize with people on the other side. Just like if you took two people on completely opposite ends of the, 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 the bell curve and like kind of talk to one another like, this guy's an idiot. Right, they would say that about each other. Now you just have more of that because the the net difference between them is so much greater than the net difference um, between people on a regular bell curve, right? Um, so I mean, the easiest way for, to think about this, if you're not a math person, again, I realize I'm kind of cutting out pretty much anyone that listens to this who's not a freaking math major or anything. Um, like, think about if like the test average, right? Let's say the teacher rounded rounded it so the average was an 80. Right? So everyone, you know, generally speaking, an 80 is the average. You had, you know, some moron got a 50 and some genius got a 100. But most people got an 80, right? That's just kind of the, the way it works. And that's like a g general unimodal distribution. But with the bimodal distribution, you're getting, uh, let's say the two peaks are... A 50 and a 90 right so then you get people that are like oh well are you in the 50 category or are you, the, are you in the 90 category you know it's like oh well if you're in the 50 category you're an idiot because you know you're a moron but you you realize you have people who are just more aggregated towards their own little areas right and the people that got 50s were like well school's stupid it's not a measure of intelligence you know something and again you could I'm using an academic example here, but I'm thinking this just applies to any topic that could have differing opinions. I think culturally due to the technology, again, big my big boogeyman technology, um, is you just get people that are more divided in that sense. And I, I, do, I really think that is different than it has been. I mean, people could say that, oh, people have always disagreed and this and that, but... Uh, not to this extent, I don't think. And again, I'm not really using anything to back that up. I'm just, um, anecdotally, I don't think that uh, there, it's, I, I think it has progressed. I, I think most people would agree with that. It's more uni, I think it's, <laughs> I think the, uh, there's a unilateral, unimodal distribution on people that would agree with what I'm saying. Meaning that uh, opinions are, um, more bimodal of nature instead of being unimodal. And I think even just as a whole, political or not political discourse, discourse as a whole is just dead, right? Maybe in with the exception of, uh, I'm not even sure if there is an exception. Is there an exception to true discourse? What, what, uh, what areas of society truly have? bipartisan discourse a healthy bipartisan discourse I'm not sure if I can think of any anything off the top of my head that applies right because you'd even say that like uh, like academia for example you could say oh it's like healthy discourse but what a lot of people don't realize is that like research studies taken on by unit like they're funded a lot of times by organizations so there's still there's a vested interest in getting achieving some kind of result, and uh, you know one thing about being good at math is you can fuck with it a little bit to get results that you want. You know there's this whole concept of p hacking um, to achieve results that you're looking for, right? And I think especially if some company or some entity or whatnot is seeking a certain result to support. You know, I, I would think it would be the context of a marketing claim. So let's say you have some new drug, it's a pharmaceutical company. You want studies that support um, whatever claim that is. Because I know, like, one example that's common is that the, uh, 
there was like a study done on on chocolate. And I'm not. I don't think a chocolate company was the one that like was advocating for it. I just think it was a study done on chocolate. Um, but they uh, they like didn't account for any other factors. They just um, just had like people that ate chocolate regularly and people that didn't. Um, and it was like a specific type of chocolate. It was like a, a high cacao, so essentially low sugar. It wasn't, you know, milk chocolate. It was, you know, it's 80% sugar. But uh, they were accounting for all these different variables, like 20 variables, you know, like blood glucose level, uh, you know, cholesterol, this, 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 that, stress. Um, you know, they took like, they had like 40 variables, right? And I think for most of them, most of the variables, there was like nothing, like there's nothing interesting to say about it. So they just like didn't include any of those. But then they like found, oh, there's like, oh, interesting. Like there's this tiny little, there's this statistically significant decrease in cortisol or something. I don't know. And like, oh, do you, and then they can, you know, publish a BuzzFeed article saying about how chocolate, uh, you know, is the key to a stress-free life. When it's like, okay, well, you took something that was the slightest bit, like, like it, it, it's still, in my mind, entirely gray, right? It's something, a fact, or a fact, quote, that is entirely gray and colored it white, which, in, from a journalism perspective, should be the cardinal sin, right? You should, something's in a gray area, it should remain in a gray area, because it's, it's just not good practice to just extrapolate black and white results from gray inferences. And ultimately, the unsatisfactory truth about pretty much everything is that it's all gray, right? You live in a gray world. Nothing's black and white. Um, very few. I mean, you know, the, like, the law of thermodynamics, I would say, is pretty black and white, right? So it's not like, you know... There's, that much, there's too, too much gray area there, but generally speaking, there's a hell of a lot more gray than anything else. And a gray, I'm just referring to anything that doesn't have a concrete solution. So, again, yeah, maybe like in this one study, chocolate improved the, you know, a certain type of cholesterol or something in one of the study groups. Again, like what, that, what a, I mean... How significant of a finding is that, right? In, in the grand scheme of the whole study, right? Your 40 other variables either got worse or didn't do anything. So then, like, are you just going to ignore all those and then just account for, like, the very basic ones? The other thing to do is they, well, there's a uh, an amount of correlation with, uh, um, there's an amount of correlation. So think about like two variables, two things are um, like there's a, f a 5% correlation or something. Just a little, I'm just going to use an arbitrary number because I don't know the exact amount of it. But essentially you can continue taking um, measurements on something um, or be tracking measurements on something. And then the moment you see it reaches that statistically significant threshold whatever it's five percent or eight percent or whatever it is um you can then claim it as a statistically significant um finding right and it's called p hacking p being like this amount that is statistically significant um which like if you think about it it's like okay so you're just kind of waiting until you get a certain result <laughs> And then, like, stopping the study, right? Or just continuing the study until you get a certain result. Um, you know, it's not really, it's not a genuine science thing. Like, why is that? It's, doesn't that go against science? And so it's, I don't know, it's, uh, it's sobering in some sense to realize that even, oh, science doesn't lie. It's like, well, scientists are humans, and humans lie all the time. So it's not like, as objective as we want to be with with science, uh, sometimes it isn't it isn't quite as uh, satisfying as we'd like. 
Um, I just think that that's a fact that a lot of people don't realize is that there's even like the back by science claims aren't aren't foolproof because there's there's ways around it and if the hot dog industry is paying that much to for a study on hot dogs i'm sure they could find some metric that people that ate hot dogs are better at and again better being you know kind of a big gray block um but uh, you know, in, in some ways, it just makes you lose faith in everything, in everything. So it's certainly not a good thing to apply to everything. I, you gotta believe or stand by or live by some amount of universal truth. So it's not, um, you know, it's certainly not healthy to. Well, everything's fucking wrong. So I fucking, you know, there's some more optimism. That, uh, that you should have, I think. I guess. <laughs> well, my, my I was I'm looking at my uh, note here, and of course it is. Uh, <laughs> it's like the I have it on here as like the death of art. <laughs> so, again, not a very optimistic thing. I don't know why that's. Uh, these are the themes that circulate around in my head. Is mostly cynical or. Uh, kind of not optimistic things. I, I guess it just tends to be I try to be as honest with uh, with my hypothetical audience and just with myself as a whole, as more importantly. Um, and, you know, honest truths tend to be a lot less fun or interesting to talk about and think about than, uh, you know, falsehoods or... Uh, problems, right? So I think it's just as a the problem solver in me always likes um, tackling, you know, problems and things versus like rejoicing. I mean, how how boring would content be if it was all just like, uh, oh, like how great is this and how great is that? I mean, like maybe it'd be refreshing to an extent, but like no one's gonna click on that, right? Like. You know, let's consider two YouTube thumbnails. You know, you have like, um, you know, uh, you know, you, you got to put a big company in the name because that's a big thing or a big person. So like, Elon Musk is addicted to porn or something like that. I mean, I don't know. Like again, you could just make something up. Like that is gonna. It's a relatively negative title, right? In a, in a basic sense, um, or like you know why minecraft is the greatest game of all time actually i'd probably click on that one too that's a bad example um because <laughs> <coughs> uh minecraft obviously is the greatest game of all time but uh i don't know um i can think of a better example i just need to actually think and not be focused on the game for a second um you know versus like you know, life is a miracle or something. Maybe that's also just as catchy. Uh, maybe I'm maybe I'm being too too uh, too meta here, just trying to get get at something. I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe positive news is just as uh, clickable as, as negative news. But I even think that um, in terms of getting your emotions riled up, things that make you happy, like it's. You know, are you more likely to to like cry from happiness or sadness? Like generally, sadness. You don't generally cry because you're so happy. Um, so I just think it's a more predominant emotion in people. Maybe that's what makes ha happiness special: is that it's um, not as frequent. I don't know. It's uh, it's it's still it's a strange thought to have. Anyway, on to art being dead. Yeah, you heard it here first. I think uh, I think just modern, even just creativity is just so is now replaced with this commercializability, right? So um, you only really see like independent artists that produce anything real original. Generally, everything is so neoliberalized to the max that it either has corporate backing and is a cesspool of garbage. 
or you know it has no money and it's just some dude making stuff in his basement um and i think people like tend to enjoy that that stuff better but that's not it's not what's being shoved down their throats so then the majority of what you see and interact with content wise is just whatever is the most cl- commercializable it's not really what's the most creative or what's worthy of that kind of attention it's often the opposite it's not worthy of that um I guess especially pre- prevalent. Again, I don't watch Netflix, but from what I know about the machine learning algorithms that govern its content, is they don't the uh, the algorithms themselves don't value the creative merit of the videos or the content at all. It's solely based off of the engagement metrics. And like I talked about, I think the engagement metrics center around um, you know not you know, genius creative uh, pursuits or projects. Because I think there's also just more risk involved. Like from a corporate standpoint, would you invest in something that has a 50% chance of failure but could be this brilliant work of art or creative prowess? And even that, like, let's say it's, it is a brilliant work of art and creative prowess, but it's a commercial flop because the market that appreciates it is small. So then it's like, okay, well, from a financial perspective, you're still a failure. Um, And since that's how we value so much today, it doesn't really matter. And all your creative stuff is garbage. And I guess the luxury market's an exception um, because you you don't need to sell that much of a luxury item for it to be worthwhile. Which I guess I think why art in that sense is um alive maybe a little bit but i even think that like you know the whole thing with uh the uber wealthy like kind of storing you know art as assets right that's again it's a very neoliberalized um uh impact that's even on a market that niche right the fine art market like what the fuck who who's running around trying to ruin that you know but if rich people can, um, you know, put their money in it to save on taxes or something, they, from in a neoliberalist perspective, should because that's what it's free market. That's what uh, it's kind of built off of. Not that I'm being critical of any of that. I just I don't have an opinion. I don't really care. It's it is what it is. I mean, I'm going to do nothing about it, whatever it is. Um, but uh, it's an interesting thought that that's what has happened in so many. Um, so many markets, uh, especially, um, yeah, but it, it's a little, you know, I've always, despite being a STEM person, I've always considered one of my strengths, you know, I always, I always check the box for being creative. I always wanted to think of myself as being creative and I wanted to be creative and I think I'm creative to an extent, um. Again, quantifying that, I think if you go about quantifying creativity, you've, you're defeating the purpose, right? There's no, there's no objective metric to who's more creative and better. Um, um, I, I think the way you could metricize that, which I'm going to, I guess, just because that's uh, the way I think, is originality, right? And maybe just because it's not original, you know, it's not mutually exclusive. Like, you know, just because it's original doesn't mean it's creative. You know, you can make something original that's uninspired, but you're more likely to have something creative if it's original. And you're certainly not going to have anything creative if it's unoriginal, right? I, what's what's unoriginal and creative, right? Nothing. Right? I realize I'm just saying words and cells, but I, I guess try to pull the logic away from this. Don't Don't apply, you know, typical logic to this line of reasoning. I think that's we're kind of defeating the purpose, which again I'm guilty of. But because um, I also have a hard time even using a lot of words now that you know if they're not quantifiable in a sense I can't attach uh, attach it to a metric or attach it to some value, um, quantifiable value that is. Then the word itself becomes meaningless. Um, it's just blah, you know. Um, it's kind of like the whole hard work thing. It's like, what the fuck does that even mean? Like, I mean, you know, um, so I, I'm trying to, I guess, 
be able be okay with words not having concrete meaning more um, just because I think it's you know you're not a fun person to talk to even like to yourself if you're just like well that word doesn't mean anything <laughs> you know you know because I I get in these thoughts and I'm like well I'm just you know these words actually you know I'm not able to quantify that I think if you over logic everything and think purely in terms of logic and use you know mathematical induction really in your line of thinking it's uh you're, you're naturally going to arrive at this uber cynical very um nihilistic perspective which maybe you're right but like what's the point you, you might like you'd be better off being wrong right i think i touched on this before about the uh the ignorance versus the you know being right you know what what's the cost of really being right all the time about x y or z right you'd be better off just accepting it as a absurdity or you know which again isn't really wrong either you're just kind of accepting that it's not worth talking about or just kind of letting it be letting it be gray because you know as much as uh you know it's satisfying to get to pull black and white out of gray and uh, you know hypothesize black and white from gray um, it's all gray so like you're not really you're not really coming up with anything spectacular and and being you know just guessing like your guess is no better than someone who took a random guess right so oh that's frustrating 16 blocks short um yeah, but I, I don't know. There's just a lot of uh, a lot of holes you can run into. Kind of letting logic always run the ship. I realize from a academic perspective, it does nothing but good to be overly logical, like and an, an analytical to a fault. I think is largely rewarded um, academically, and maybe for good reason too, right? I think that's you know, what's the, what is the point of academia? Is the point of academia as an institution to, to get you job placement? Not necessarily. I think it's to further the knowledge of human existence. So that is mainly in the lines of theoretical concepts, right? So I think people that, like, oh, these stupid institutions don't educate our children on useful topics. Well, it's like, well, and by design, I don't, I'm not sure that they're that was their like point, right? And it's 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 changed, I think, since the onset. But originally, these institutions were solely designed to for research, theoretical research that you're never going to see anything out of, really, as a normal person, right? So people with PhDs are you know they're spending their lives in labs trying to dis trying to give us an extra half inch on something. And people think it's like, oh, well, you know, you should be able to, you know, make a sales call and, you know, understand business. It's like very, very, very separate institutions, academia and, and business. And we live and work in a world of business, but we educate and further our knowledge as, as the human race in an academic setting. So I, I think it's just as naive to say, well, college is for idiots. Um, Okay, from a business lens, yeah, it is. But ultimately, like, what you see in business is precursed in academia, right? So the, the, the breakthroughs in artificial intelligence and machine learning only because that's kind of what I'm, uh, what I'm, you know, in class right now with, really. That's, that's, that was academic research done 50 years ago that has, you know, slowly evolved and with each incremental step and then eventually we get these um you, know, you get business application right but it takes a long time for that to fester and generally it's not as uh it's not rewarding like to you know even financially like uh you know phd in math or something you're gonna be working in these theoretical math concepts and you're not gonna be making any money you know i think you make more with like a bachelor's degree and working for a company than you would in academia 
you know, in isolation. Um, but I think there, there's value in both. I, I don't, I think it's, it's, again, I think it's naive to, to be on either side of it, you know, it being useless. Really, you know, it depends on what you want to do. And then the issue is that people don't know what they want to do, right? So they kind of max out their academia tree. Um, unbeknownst to them is that they don't, you know, they're business oriented. So, you know, business oriented to me is about, um, skills, applicable skills, day to day skills. Whereas, uh, uh, a future in academia should be, uh, reasoning and analysis and, you know, to a certain extent, kind of the overthinking, right. Of everything. And, uh, you know, drawing conclusions from, from data and trying to come up with stuff, new stuff. Right. But I think it gets so easily conflated when you have business heads that, you know, you're not learning anything practical. No, I'm not. That's not the point. That's not what it was like. It wasn't structured to do that. Right. I mean, we can, we can try to adjust it. And to a certain extent it has. I mean, I think there's a lot more, a lot more academic institutions or a lot of more of academia as a whole is, has transitioned to trying to make people job ready and market ready. And they've done a pretty good job. I think, I still don't think it's a waste. Um, but again, the whole, the crux of its purpose from the onset is it wasn't designed for that. Um, so I think people, people misinterpret that. I'm not sure how I got from art to here. Um, I, yeah, I honestly have no idea how I got from art to here. Um, but, uh, it's still an interesting, interesting kind of conversation. And again, I'm not, I don't ever want to be proposing answers. I think operating in the gray is a very safe, safe way to, uh, safe way to be, but, um, it is to some extent just dangerous not really having any, you know, cause think about if you, if all your opinions are just in this, in the middle, this nebulous middle area, then you believe in nothing as soon as you'll believe in everything, right? So it's like you, you're, you know, that's kind of just as stupid as having some far reaching belief. So at, at some point you have to draw, you have to, you know, draw a line somewhere. Um, and, uh, and I, was, I think you don't really have to draw it. So there's not, there's not really a, a rush to, I mean, in terms of your lifelong beliefs, there's no rush to to draw a line at certain beliefs that you have and don't. But at some point, you got to sell out and believe in something. Um, sorry, I'm trying to think about what I want here. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't think. I'm not sure if there's an age or a. I really think the uh, the more you think about beliefs is the the longer it takes for you to cement them. So like really the you know if you were sold on something in middle school and you formed all your beliefs if you haven't evolved since your beliefs in middle school you're that's probably when you had formed all your beliefs, right? But if you're someone who'd always questioned and transitioned and flip-flopped it you know, it could be well into the middle of your life before you've established a firm set of beliefs, which could put you ahead or behind. Again, I don't know. Um, and if I did, I would have made a choice, but I don't. What happened to these beacons? What the heck? I'm trying to make sure these things are working. They are. What the heck? Um, there you go. Okay. Yeah, so anyway, art, art is dead. I think creativity is not rewarded, um, at least in the, the mass market landscape that regular con or other content is being rewarded at now. Um, there's really no premium on things that are original, which, uh, which is a little sad, but uh, that's the way it is. Nothing I'm going to do about it. So there's not a whole lot to do about complaining. A commenter, I'm just going to leave them anonymous, but a commenter 
um, suggest that I, not didn't really suggest this, I'm just kind of pulling this based off of what they, uh, they mentioned, they just, I, I talked about hard work being a pet peeve of mine, right, and then they kind of brought up, at least they've, uh, they've added the word, uh, uh, the hustle word, um, which is a word thrown around a lot, uh, and I guess I'll, I'll just kind of give my general opinions as it relates to that. And um, I, I, I will, I'll start off by saying I put them in different categories, fundamentally, right? So, um, you know, claiming as a hard worker and like hustling is two very different things, right? Uh, first, I think as a descriptor, I think if you, you know, are talking about somebody and say, oh, they're a hustler, right? To me, that means something way different than they're a hard worker. Totally different. Um, one I view as an insult. One I just view as a trait. You know, it could be favorable depending on, you know, what kind of, what you're looking to get out of this person or, you know, what their relationship is to you. It could be a good or a bad thing of being a hustler. Um, a hustler to me, um, and again, I'm just being totally generic as hell with this too. Is a uh, someone that just it, that values the uh, a uh, a product of their efforts, you know, at such a premium that they um, don't ever really they don't clock out, um, and and I guess a very basic way of putting it, uh, which again has its benefits, I suppose. Um, I see people in industries that there's industries that reward hustling to like a lot right so I, investment banking is one that comes to mind um to a certain extent technology careers i don't know why i brought this to careers that's just where um, my head went with this immediately um but i guess depending on what you're doing with your life uh hustling is is a very again i'm just kind of use the the definition that kind of pops in your head which you think about it is uh it's rewarding in a lot of those cases but there's even more occupations that is really pointless to have any kind of hustle right like think about like a teacher right <laughs> it's like you're paid like no amount of like yeah, you can make work ahead or something but being on the clock all the time and like hustling like what, what does it even look like as a teacher and like why would you want that <laughs> So, um, this is, you know, another way to kind of look at it. Um, but, you know, there's certainly a lot of occupations. I think it does reward you. Um, but it's also just, it's, it's dangerous in, in some ways that you, uh, it often becomes such a pivotal focus, the hustling mentality of it that uh, lose sight of the bigger picture a lot easier, I think. Um, and again, I don't really know if I want to get any more descriptive than that, only because I, I'm not feeling super inspired on uh, what else to say with, with hustling. Um, yeah, it certainly doesn't, as a self-proclaimed creative, um, it certainly doesn't do you any favors to be a hustler. Because creativity comes from leisure. That's kind of the basis of it, right? So art... Art began as a leisure activity. It's still a leisurely activity. Um, and making it into a hustling effort, like to, in terms of maximizing the amount of things that you're producing, is kind of a stupid thing, right? Um, like, what? That isn't. How's that going to help you? Uh, so, I, yeah, I suppose that's one way I. I see hustle as it relates to, to creative pursuits. I don't know, like, I guess this brings into question, do you, are there, like, the different types of people, like, you see people that are left brain and right brain, and again, I think assigning any kind of binary is really stupid. You, know, you could say that maybe you're more leaning towards one way than the other, um, or perhaps are just balanced, right? I mean, I don't, my right brain or left brain, it's okay, well, I'm good at math. I like the challenge of math, but I, if you ask me what I would, I'd like to do every day, it'd be something that 
doesn't involve math, right? So like maybe I think like right brain, but I my desires are left brain. And again, I, I don't even know if I'm I've mixed up the brains. I, I don't really know. I don't really care. I don't like. I, no, I generally don't subscribe to stuff like that just because I I think it's reductive. I mean, I I think we should just instead of trying to make these labels and everything like oh extrovert, I'm a forty percent extrovert. Like just accept that humans are incredibly complex more complex than your brain is going to be able to self-aware wrap it set it wrap itself around and just accept that there's too many things for you to account for and putting them into buckets isn't really going to do you any favors and i guess this gets on my one of my ultimate if you if you know me you know i hate this um <laughs> a certain subset of the of uh not my audience, because my audience doesn't exist, but people are, would hate me for this opinion. But that's the point of me doing this, is to you know get some get some real haters in here. Astrology is a complete and utter waste of time. Like, uh, you know, and, and again, I think it just comes back to this idea that you know we want to feel like we have a sense of control or are smart or like you know know things about the the universe or have some cosmic awareness or some spiritual. No, no, and uh, you know, unless there is, you know, uh, no, no, <laughs> like, it's, uh, assuming some alignment of stars has any bearing on your quirkiness, like you're an idiot. Like, are you just you're grasping at straws to to have some kind of personality? Just don't. Why are you relying on something like that? Like, you can even if you don't have a personality and you have to. Um, try to create something out of nothing like you look like the biggest idiot trying to do so out of the stars right start the giant balls of gas light years away um, you know, somehow some ha have some bearing on your personality right and like people oh well it accurately predicts my uh, actions like no it doesn't okay like if you actually read any of them, they're like these ridiculously vague statements that could apply to anyone in any circumstance, right? Like, you'll learn something new today. It's like, probably, I mean, I don't know, like, if you t now that you tell me that, I could convince myself that I've learned something new, even if I didn't, you know, or say, you know, I, you know, like, it, there's just, it, do, it does absolutely no good. I think it's a complete complete and utter waste i i really don't even have the patience to i guess to argue with but for better, lack of a better word argue with anyone that swears up and down by astrology because like i i just there's too many words and there's too many too many things i could say that it just go against go against their point i i think even if like let's somebody were to disagree with me on that and say that it's there's some truth to it or some greater cosmic truth. They're not. They don't think. They're not think. They're you know. But again, I'm not saying it's all bad, but they're not. They don't think with any amount of logic, right? So if you're gonna if you can accept that you believe completely irrationally, your beliefs are irrational. Not to say it's worse than being rational. I'm just. I'm gonna. I mean, for the most part, it's generally more accepted for you to be a rational thinker. But if you can accept that your thoughts and ideas on these is are, are rational, then again we shouldn't be having an argument. But then I can at least I can respect your your beliefs in saying that because you know that there is no bearing on which you're actually believing this, right? But you're not. No one to any extent is rewarded for thinking irrationally, right? You fail the math test if you do that. And like, yeah, if you want to use that as an excuse to be objectively wrong about stuff, you can. But Again, that's where I would draw the line. Like I talked about, you have to draw a line somewhere. I'm going to draw a line there. There's no amount of... No, you're illogical. You're not using the same mathematical and physical systems or laws of the universe that it's agreed upon by everyone else. I realize I, just, I took a shit on this earlier in the episode, and now I'm kind of like backtracking. But my point when saying is that this is where I, this is where I would draw the line. And I think in most cases, generally people are not logical enough in their reasoning. They're too, 
they're too emotional. And I think for me, maybe I'm on, I'm trying to think with too much logic and it's causing a, um, it's more emotionally distressing to be overly logical, right? So for me, I'm maybe even trying to tone it down a little bit, but I think for most other people, especially people that believe in astrology, I think you're going the wrong direction, AKA you need to be more logical and be more right-brained or whatever the whatever the term you want to use. Again, I don't subscribe to that, but if that is what's going to um, resonate with that person, then fine, so be it. Even then, like, I'm not going to listen to me. I mean, you know, that's how hard it is to change people's mind these days, these minds these days. Like, it's, I, I don't, I would love to believe that I, somebody could change my mind with something that they're saying. But I just think it's, that's a premium. Like, that's, that's just as rare as a, uh, a truly creative piece of multimedia nowadays is somebody having their mind changed legitimately and not for views again you know you can oh, like um i don't know or not because they have to right some corporate arm in there making them change their minds i like think it's just as impossible for that to take place in today's day and age uh, well back to back to the cynical cynical depths of uh depths of my mind i go of course it's par for the course um you know i don't know what's something what's some happy stuff you know that i would even i could even bother talking about for any period of time right i'm not sure if i could even think of something that is like you know i could talk about for any extended period of time that isn't like doesn't have some kind of negative-ish twist or some opinion piece, right? I don't know. Is there? Leave a comment <laughs> if if you're watching at the 47th minute and you're inclined to give me something more optimistic. Again, happy is kind of a pathetic word to use there, um, but it's all I have really. Uh, you know, what is there to look forward to? I guess advancements in technology and medicine. I guess medicine is probably a more optimistic uh, foresight than technology. Cause, I mean, I you see advancements in technology the last 10 years. I view that mostly negative, right? But I would think curing illnesses is mostly a good thing. You know, unless you subscribe to the belief that, you know, it's, you know, the Darwinist um, ideology, which... You can maybe, I don't know, has, has merit, but uh, is generally frowned upon by most people just because it's, you know, twisted. Um, you know, same with the whole, like, euthanasia thing, which, again, I, I respect all beliefs. So if that's something that, uh, you know, I'm sure you could form an argument for pretty much anything these days, and it'd be reasonable, but uh, Generally, it's frowned upon, so there's not really... You either have to go Alex Jones level of conspiracy theory and just accept that you're a maniac and everyone's going to hate you to publicly support an ideology like that. Um, or you just, uh, you know, vehemently oppose it and everyone claps and cheers, you know, or you do a sensible thing and just kind of say nothing, um, which for some, I guess, is a just as powerful a statement as doing something, right? Which blows my mind. Like, really? Like, you're going to shame not having an opinion on something now? Like, somebody that just, just wants to stay out of it. Like, now it's political to have no opinion. It's, it's, it's uh, there's a lot of, a lot of backwards logic there. Again, people, some people need to be using more logic. Others, not so much, but most people need to be using more logic in their lives, their decision making. Because it would help them, I think. Um, not everyone, but some. Uh, and people that have those kind of uh, beliefs on, you know, the uh, the beliefs on the opinions, the beliefs on beliefs, um, should be using more the logic, just because it's 
quite the fallacy to to do that. I never understood either, like the again, this is probably too political for my taste. But the uh the cancel cancel culture type where it's doesn't really doesn't make sense. Like I, I thought making mistakes and learning from them was a good thing. Right? And it's like isn't it the mo- the mantra like innocent until proven guilty um that seems to be lost in the sentiment there right and as well as like learning from mistakes like i don't i don't know if there's a, is there a if there's a cancellation policy for people in public there should also be like a reinstation policy right so it's like you get assigned reparations by <laughs> your your cancelers and then you can um you know rejoin later with you know everyone's kind of forgiven you and you've accepted that you're able to move on and learn but like that doesn't happen a lot of people i think i learned this um i learned this today what'd you learn today you know such a scorpio i learned something today i'm not even i don't even know what the i I don't know what i am (laughs) but uh um in ancient greece when they or yeah i think it was ancient greece or rome or something again i must must have not learned it that well because i can't even recall it properly but when they would excommunicate is where that started where like the cancellations that's where like it was kind of round founded in like you'd publicly cancel someone was really in in those days it was excommunication so they were you you're banished from the city and um they actually like they made it 10 years after 10 years you would come back and they would pretend like nothing happened right so if you did something let's say you believed in the wrong three-headed god or something or whatever it was they banished you for back then or you you know ate a grape or fucked your neighbor or something whatever it is that got you in trouble you kind of were banned or banished from the community for for 10 years and then and then when you got back it was like you're good you've paid your dues no one's mad at you anymore but you know, there's no real sort of reparations policy for getting canceled now like you know if someone screamed the n-word is there a way for them to kind of work back in at some point or are they just kind of, you know, out for life? Is it a form of suicide, really? Social suicide. Um, interesting thought. I, I think I could definitely dive deeper on something like that. I'll do that for another time, just because it's sensitive. At some point here, I'm going to run out of uh, mild topics to talk about and be forced to get edgier. Um, so you can buckle up for that. You can provoke me, too, if you want to leave a uh <laughs> leave a comment that i could i could run with uh there as well i'm I'm really apathetic towards the whole thing there's not i mean i i don't i'm not here to impress anyone um with my minecraft or my commentary skills for that matter but if uh you know i'm doing this more for me than for anyone else i don't really care if anyone watches this if you do it's great it's awesome that's it's always nice to have an audience, right? It's like, yeah, um, it's really nice to, like, you know, people love to sing, right? You can, like, love love singing alone, but ultimately, like, the real thrill in acting or singing or anything like that is when, you know, you you have your, you know, your family goes to a concert of you singing, right? And then that's where it's, you know, that's where you get to show off, right? So it's not like, I think it's stupid. It's shallow for people to think that oh, it's like I do it because I love it and I don't fucking care. Fair, like to an extent that might be true, but ultimately things with an audience, things tend to be more rewarding, at least internally. Whether they should be or not, they are. Um, and same with something like this. Like yeah, I'm obviously uh, I'm letting people watch it. It's public. I don't care. Um, and it's be fun if people watch it, but if they don't, it's, you know, it's whatever. It's less stakes if I decide I don't want to do it anymore. Um, which is good, but, uh, it is more fun to do things with an audience. And I think, you know, people can't ignore that when they're, um, you know, talking about why they do certain things. Oh, I don't do it for this or that. It's like probably maybe not primarily, but there's, there's never one variable with anything. It's always like a hundred. So, um, you know, ever, anytime anyone's ever assigning one variable to something or it's, I only do this because it's this X, Y, Z. It's like, okay, you're a liar. Um, 
nobody only does it for one variable. There's always a bunch of things at play, at least for anyone that uh, decides to use the logic piece of their brain, which maybe is, is less people than I think. I don't know. I'm more hopeful than that. Let's, uh, let's take a nice aerial view of, oh my god, nice aerial view of my abomination here. Not totally sure what to do with the grass, honestly. It uh, it looks kind of, I like the green. The greens mesh pretty well. Um, but I'm not totally sure what to do. I do like the beacons. I think the beacons was a nice touch. Maybe they should be light blue. I don't know. I'll figure it out next time. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've kind of hit my quota in terms of what... I don't really want to open another topic without more time on the clock. So I'll uh, I'll call it here this time. But uh, feel free to leave a comment for me. And uh, hopefully I'll film another one of these very soon. But uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy. And I will see you next time. Peace.